The concept of the Hellmouth, once considered to be the jaws of hell, is a striking and terrifying image from medieval Christian art and theology, representing the entrance to hell. It is typically depicted as a monstrous, gaping mouth, often belonging to that of a dragon or a beast, through which the damned are consumed. This powerful image resonated deeply with medieval audiences, both as a visual reminder of the horrors of eternal damnation and as a moral warning about the consequences of sin. The Hellmouth, rooted in early Christian ideas and shaped by medieval iconography, serves as a dramatic embodiment of the fate awaiting the unrighteous after death. The concept of hell in medieval Christian thought was heavily shaped by the imagery shown to us in the book of Revelation, such as the endless pit and the lake of fire. But many of the tropes and beliefs surrounding the design of hell were also forged by the likes of Dante's Divine Comedy, both of which offered detailed descriptions of eternal torment. The Hellmouth imagery, however, draws particularly from earlier biblical descriptions of the underworld, such as Isaiah 5.14, where hell is described as a devouring force that hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Some historians put forth that it was this image of hell as a consuming entity is what inspired much of the medieval artistic portrayal of hell, or at least the entrance to hell as a literal mouth. The New Testament's description of hell, particularly in Matthew 25:41, where Christ speaks of eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, also helps shape the medieval understanding of hell as a terrifying place. So it can be said that the original text certainly enabled ghastly imagery like the hellmouth to slot quite easily into one's idea of what hell might have looked like. The Hellmouth itself would become to be depicted quite commonly in imagery surrounding the Last Judgment, the biblical event where every soul who's ever lived will be approved or penalised, as well as in the harrowing of Hell, a 4th century narrative separate from the Bible that details Jesus' descent into the underworld after his crucifixion. Whilst the mouth itself is never specifically mentioned in scripture, nor ever explicitly detailed in this fashion, the image of this grotesque and unsettling gateway remains steadfast in the imagination of those in the Middle Ages, and even beyond into the Renaissance periods. Most notably, after the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s, the image of the Hellmouth enjoyed a certain popularity, depicting figures from either side of the faith being led or disappearing into the mouth. In medieval art, the Hellmouth often appears in Last Judgment scenes, where it serves as a visual anchor for the depiction of hell. This mouth is usually represented as a grotesque beast, often dragon-like, with flames, demons and souls writhing in agony inside. These scenes were common in the decoration of church portals, where they served as a reminder to the faithful about the importance of living a righteous life to avoid the torments of hell. Those depicted in and around the Hellmouth are usually shown to be naked, their clothes having either been stripped of them so that they stand ashamed, or having rotted away as they now finally stand resurrected and awaiting judgement. Some of these people though retain their headgear, indicating that they may have been kings, bishops or people of political importance or power, which shows us that not even those who rank at the top of society will be exempt from judgement. One of the most famous early depictions of the Hellmouth is found in the Winchester Psalter. In this illuminated manuscript, Hell is depicted as a large beast, its jaws open wide to devour the damned. The damned souls are shown to be dragged by demons into the mouth, which acts as a portal to the inferno. The use of animalistic imagery was a common medieval motif, reflecting the belief that hell was not only a place of eternal suffering, but also chaos and disorder, ruled by beastly, diabolical forces. The doom paintings, murals often found in medieval English churches, commonly featured hell mouths as part of their portrayal of the Last Judgement. These murals, such as those at St Thomas's Church in Salisbury, 
often depicted Christ in judgment, with the righteous ascending to heaven on one side and the damned being swallowed by the hellmouth on the other. The vividness of these depictions, with writhing figures being consumed by flames, really would have delineated the severity of going to hell and showcased a reality so terrifying it would discourage anyone from wanting to sin in the first place. In the Anglo-Saxon Vercelli Homilies, a collection of 23 entries of Old English prose, Satan is detailed as being likened to a dragon, perhaps a reference to his dragon form seen in Revelation, and that as this dragon, he swallows the damned. We are told, they never came out of the pit of snakes and of the throat of the dragon, which is called Satan. Some might find it quite fitting to associate the imagery of the Hellmouth with Satan's mouth, seeing as the character Satan would probably love to consume humanity and deny them the chance of reconnecting with God in heaven. There are those who point out that the Hellmouth is never depicted as being closed, as in, it never bites down, which might be representative of Satan welcoming lost souls to his realm, a reflection of his appetite for corruption and never being full. The Hellmouth doesn't just find itself attributed to the mouth of Satan though, but in some beliefs can also be seen as the mouth of Leviathan, the giant sea monster described to us in the book of Job. In an old English poem known as The Whale, there are some who interpret that the whale in the narrative can be equated with that of the biblical Leviathan, where we are told the whale has another trick. When he is hungry, he opens his mouth and a sweet smell comes out. The fish are tricked by the smell and they enter into his mouth. Suddenly, the whale's jaws close. Likewise, any man who lets himself be tricked by a sweet smell and led to sin will go into hell opened by the devil if he has followed the pleasures of the body and not those of the spirit. When the devil has brought them to hell, he clashes together the jaws, the gates of hell. No one can get out from them, just as no fish can escape the mouth of the whale. In the later Middle Ages, monsters from Greek mythology, including that of Cerberus, who quite fittingly guards the gates to Hades, also became associated with that of the Hellmouth. The Hellmouth functioned as both a theological symbol and a social tool in medieval society. It represented the idea of sin and damnation in its most graphic form, with the mouth acting as the gateway to eternal suffering. This image was intended to provoke fear and reflection, reinforcing the church's moral teachings and encouraging penitence. The vividness of these depictions was particularly aimed at the illiterate masses, who could not read theological texts, but could grasp the message through these fearsome visual representations. The Hellmouth was also a metaphor for disorder and chaos, contrasting with the order and peace of heaven. In a society deeply influenced by Christian hierarchies, hell represented the ultimate breakdown of divine order. The image of the mouth, always associated with consumption and destruction, served as a reminder that hell was a place where souls were consumed, both physically and spiritually, by eternal suffering. The Hellmouth also reflected the medieval fascination with the monstrous and the grotesque. Medieval bestiaries and sermons often featured detailed descriptions of hell and its inhabitants, drawing on apocryphal sources like the Apocalypse of Peter, and later, the writings of St. Gregory the Great. These descriptions, combined with local folklore, contributed to the vivid and often horrific portrayals of the Hellmouth in popular culture. These ideas influenced mystery plays and pageants, where the Hellmouth was sometimes a functional part of the set, through which actors playing demons would drag the damned. The medieval depiction of the Hellmouth was a powerful tool of Christian teaching and moral reinforcement. It blended biblical and theological ideas with the era's artistic imagination, creating a terrifying image that served both as a reminder of the coming judgment and as a warning to those who were faithful. Though the grotesque and monstrous imagery of the Hellmouth did eventually lose popularity, you might say it is something of a blast from the past for modern believers today, 
who, even now, might think twice about sin as they contemplate the horror so acutely captured in such old art. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's episode, then don't forget to leave this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Until next time.